This is Plus TV Africa, where big stories live. Welcome to Tea Time, where we bring you the biggest stories and interesting personalities in the world of entertainment. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I'm here with Ewa Oritu and Ife Olua Oshankaye. What's poppin', people? I'm good. How are you I'm doing? <clears throat> mm. Why are you two not doing? Because you know what, <laughs> you know what was going on behind the scenes. Mm. Mm. Something is always going on between you <laughs> two. I'm calmer now. Mm. Ah, okay, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with our first story, which is on Lupita Yongo. She, um, she has said she was a victim of colorism as a child. I think that's not news. Mm. And um, when she she used to wish um, she have um, the, a different skin, the Oscar-winning actor said in an interview with BBC that colorism is the daughter of racism in a world that rewards lighter skin over darker skin. Yongo was raised in Kenya before moving to the United States. Um, Colorism is prejudice against people who have a darker skin tone or the preferential treatment of those who are of the same race but lighter skin. So I think Ife is passionate about um, um, issues I've like I've always this. been passionate about the prejudice against um, darker skin people compared to lighter skin people. That's why you no, chose no, Ewa no, over no, me. No, 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 no disrespect to you. Just go on, because, go on. Um, <laughs> If you look at, uh, I'm going to bring back the um, Vogue magazine thing that mm -hmm. Adesuai told me was in, and a lot of people said, oh, they tried to make her look white. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? A lot of people had that opinion. That's colorism, because if you're an African, you should be African with pride. If you are black, you should be black with pride. Mm -hmm. Somebody shouldn't say, oh, I'm too black for TV. Oh, you're too black for certain roles. Do you understand? And I don't think it's only applicable to... Um, What's it called? Af um, what's it called? Africans now. Mm -hmm. Even African Americans. You see people who are mixed race, the likes of Chris Brown, the likes of Drake, making mm -hmm. headways way more than people like Michael Blackson. Do you understand? Because it's black. It would take a longer period for him to do it because it's totally dark skin. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But people like the Chris Brown, Drake, they might have it easy because they know that, oh, you have this Beyonce. white, yeah, Beyonce. You know what I mean? So colorism and racism, they go kind of hand in hand because mm -hmm. racism is prejudice against um, a particular race, right? Now, this is prejudice against Darker skin, skin, skin people, people. Mm -hmm. so it's a, so it's still almost the same thing. So, so it's the daughter. Yeah, it's the daughter, and mm. to me, it's even the father and mother and cousin <laughs> and everything. Do you understand? They're just related. Yeah, they are related in a way, and it takes a lot of confidence mm. and it takes a lot of hard work for you to be able to overcome that because you see a lot of people that will give up because they've gone for a lot of auditions for certain, and they will be like ah. Yeah, too black. We're looking for someone lighter because ah, it will be difficult to find your mom. It's, I think someone like Juliet Ibrahim mentioned it because she was um, what's it called? Um, she's she, lighter she's, skin. She's yeah. lighter skin. She said, "Oh, they were telling her that oh, we we can't give you this role because how are we going to find the father and mom? That's the same thing when you are too dark too. Mm. Do you understand? Because that's how it but works. But sometimes and, I feel like um, it's not just about. Um, it doesn't really play. This is my own opinion. It doesn't mm. play so much in acting because when you're when you have a script, you've created a character. Already. And you can picture that character. Mm. So when they go all out to um, call for casting, they know what they want. They know who they want. So sometimes it's not necessarily about your skin color. I think this plays more in the fashion okay, world. Now I'm going to refer to something she also mentioned. She said when she was in Kenya, she mm -hmm. didn't know that black was a race until she moved to America. Mm -hmm. When people now started referring to her as black. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? In Africa, we don't see each other as, you, you can't call me, you can't say uh, it's a black man. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Here in Nigeria. Yeah, but, but if I go to America, somebody will tell me I'm herself. a black man. Mm -hmm. Now that's colorism coming to play. Oh. Because if I was... No, 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 <laughs> it's in Africa that colorism is coming to no, play. No, it's not even just in Africa. I'm talking of, okay, look at models. Now there are different shades of, um, what's it called? Um, Makeup. I don't mm -hmm. know a lot about mm -hmm. makeup. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I know you guys have what you call beige. Do you mean my color mayonnaise, is difficult to find? And you. all of that. But <laughs> you find out that you have more, um, what's it called, varieties for lighter skin. Really? Yeah, than darker mm. skinned women. Okay. I'm, 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 yeah, you have more varieties because a lot of dark skinned women do not actually find that you have to use some brown, then you now see somebody that has, looks like they have patches everywhere. They do not buy their color. Okay, you probably <laughs> blend it well anyway. I beg you. There's, when it comes to makeup, well, everybody yeah, has, has their own color. Mm -hmm. But um, what, what you were saying, I'm I think you got it mixed up, kind of. No, no, I didn't get it mixed up. No, I was trying to make a point because um, 
I can remember when we had, um, what's her name now, Beta Muga mm -hmm. on the show. She said that she goes for some um, beauty pageants mm -hmm. and all of that, or she has to walk the runway. And they are giving her a certain type of makeup, and she's telling them that, no, this is not my skin tone. And they're saying, no, we're just trying to make you look lighter. Okay, that's, because that's she's different. Because she's walking with yeah. all the models that are white. I wish we had more that. time that, to that discuss totally this colorism different. issue, but you know, we have a guest. Yes, and, yes. But yes. before we let the cat out of the bag, let's go on a very quick break. When we come back, we'll introduce this guest to you. We'll be right back. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? Oh, <laughs> are you? Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal eye. You. Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. Like I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Our guest on this episode is Dami Larry or Shandavi, a comedian who came to the limelight through consistent series of short, spontaneous comic sketches. He leveraged on these comic sketches to reach out to many through capacity building and entrepreneurial training. He is the best-selling author of Ashiri Mystery Book, a book that has been described by many as a mobile mentor. He's the founder of Ashiri Startups, a community that provides funding as well as mentorship and guidance for boarding business owners. He's a professional master of ceremony and an award-winning stand-up comedian. He has won many awards, including NEA Awards for Best Comedian category. He is the founder of one of the most successful comedy clubs in Lagos, tagged Humorality. Let's make welcome the man who is all shades of amazing, talented, intelligent, and funny, Ashiri Comedy. Welcome. Oh, ah, so you are Jarole now? Uh huh. <laughs> oh God. So I need to see connection Wi-Fi. So you need to help. You need to do like this. Uh -huh. I don't see connection. <laughs> That's the idea. Story of Tommy, well, how come you know Tommy? Well, this man is following me. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So tell us about yeah. Tommy. Well. well, I'm a chronic bedwetter, so mm. I used to mm -hmm. bedwet a lot. See, I was. I'm not sure. Are you? Are you saying, <laughs> <laughs> I said I was. Is it your bedwetter? <laughs> so you are a chronic. I said I am. I'm not sure that I'm still. It's like I'm. I'm not out of the woods yet. <laughs> Okay, I was so because they carved, <laughs> before they carved only this place out. They've carved it already. Please so uncarve it. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to bedwet and so you know when you bedwet in Yoruba they say oh man tolly. Mm. So they started calling me Tomiwa mm. because Muti to 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 they started calling me Tomiwa. I wow. <laughs> it was spontaneous for me. It's wow. it's like second nature for me bedwetting mm. there. And I used to do it in batches, hmm. like batch A between 12.30 a.m. to like 2. Wow. Then batch C is usually larger, mm. but batch C comes in volumes, like 25 liters. Wow. 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 So do you think the spontaneity left the bedwetting and came to comedy for I you? I think that was what happened, mm. because it was regular for me then. Mm. It was as good as even if I dose of bah, 2 liters, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, how did you start with um, Willie, um, Willie, Arale, Arale. Arale, 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 Okay, start? yeah, you know, we've been, uh, we've been individual comic art for a while, mm. like four or five years, but you know, it's when you start, when you start clicking that you start counting. Mm. So, we, we came together for Instagram skit, he has been on Instagram before me, mm -hmm. so but I joined him at a point, so and things started gelling. I can't really say how he started. Okay, he was doing his thing on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I was more of the corporate guy. Be, it's just an irony because normally my normal heart, I don't really speak Yoruba well mm -hmm. when I'm doing stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. So I noticed a gap in his 
act on Instagram and I volunteer to interpret for him. Oh. So while interpreting for him, I was just doing it for him. It was while interpreting for him that people started noticing me. Mm. So he now grew from mere interpretation to expression. Okay. So then I created the character out of it. So it was no longer interpretation again. It was someone doing a different thing to compliment. So he was the face I was amplifying. He was giving expression. I was giving um, ad lib. Anything you, can <laughs> you guys were friends before the old comedy. We've been friends since since January 18, 2009. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I've known him since then. You even remember the day? Yeah, I remember the day. Oh, you will celebrate anniversary. We don't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the day because someone gave me a jota that day, so mm. that jota is still in my house. So. Wow. All right, so, so one thing I would like to know is um, right now we have a lot of um, Instagram comedians or social media comedians, and then we have the stand-up comedians as well. And it's not everybody that is the Instagram comedian that can yeah. be a stand-up comedian or be an MC like you do it. Now, is there a disparity in payments when you guys go to host events. Do they place the regular stand-up comedians above the social media comedians? Well, I, I, I believe it's, it's all voiced down to how the person's brand is. Mm. Mm. Because naturally, if you have a face, the equity of face affects how premium you are. Mm. So, but it's just that it's, there is a limit to where the equity of face can take you. The equity of face can get you the job, Mm. Maybe because you're you are popular on social media and they believe you can MC, and then they brought you for an event, and then they realize that it's just online. You can't replicate what you are what doing you offline. Yeah. Yeah. So, but for people that have been able to be excellent online and at the same time show on equal professionalism in the real life, they can be premium. So, do you get my point? Yeah. You can't you can't fool them. You can fool them once, mm -hmm. and they get you for a job. But if they will call you back, it has to be. Because we have cases of people that you know the game online is different from the game offline. Yeah. One of the things that helped us was we were stand up act before skits came in play. Uh. So what worked for skits? The jokes that are funny on social media can never be funny in real life. The dynamics is completely different. Mm. So what I always tell people is it's all about your aggregating your strengths. There is the feed of play for you. There is your target if you are just an online act. Stick within that, uh, stick within that premises. I've had shows where I brought online characters whom I know that they are not stand-up acts. Mm -hmm. But I'm, of the, I'm the kind of person that I love to amplify people's strengths. So you know what I used to do? I used to script them in. So it's not like I would call them as an individual act in the process now. Uh, now trying to exploit their weakness. So I script them into the program so that when they come in, it fits mm. into what they do. What they do. You get. So, okay, but, but is it possible to learn how to be a stand-up comedian? It is possible, really? but it is. Okay. It is, but it's just that it will come with limitation. Mm. Because stand-up comedy is, is a game of no rules. Like, like when I started stand-up comedy, I was a... Those that know me back then, six, seven years ago, mm -hmm. I used to write my jokes. And I used to read them like I'm reading budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to read them. But when I, because I'm a storyteller, I love to tell stories, I love to paint pictures for like 10. When I moved to Lagos, I realized that the audience are impatient. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to hear a story. Because I, I watch a lot of exotic comedians, Dave Chappelle, Trevor Noah. Yeah, you know, if you watch those guys, you see that yeah. the way they perform is very from us. Mm -hmm. yeah. They build stories. In fact, they might have 30 minutes of no laughter because they are building it. Mm -hmm. Such that when he hits the punchline, maybe on the fourth minute, it's always massive. massive mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But you don't have that luxury as in Nigeria. You go to a court, everybody wants to go to work the next day. You are not building stories. And they pay one million for it. And they pay one million for it. You are not building stories. Are you a bricklayer? That made us laugh. You are building stories when they, when they have like nine other comedians that they are already telling you back to back. Mm. Yeah. So what I did was I had to change because of that, so I, okay, so we now have, commit, we have some jokes, we call them noodles jokes. Like in three, four minutes, you drop them, people laugh. Okay. So, but there are a few occasions when I have the time to really say stories, most especially when I travel out, you know, the audience, they are calmer. So it's, it's dynamics, you can't learn it. Mm. You can't learn it, you just have to switch. Because you can crack a joke in this hall and everybody laugh and you move to the next one and nobody laugh. Mm. So is so if you if you will really learn it if you will okay 
What happens when you crack a joke and people don't laugh? Ah, it, it happens when you crack a joke and people don't laugh. Mm -hmm. the, the grace you have is they don't know your joke. Mm -hmm. They don't know when the story is supposed to be funny. Mm -hmm. So when you drop the punchline, it comes with professionalism. When you drop the punchline mm -hmm. and you didn't get the response you require, the onus lies on you to continue the build up mm -hmm. or look for a spontaneous rescue or pick on someone on the audience in the positive note though, mm -hmm. or maybe someone you verify that can take a joke. So since the audience do not know your joke, it's, you have the grace. But eventually you now try everything and it was still coming back to you <laughs> void. It might be that your village people followed you. Mm -hmm. or, to the venue. Or, at times it's not even village people. Sometimes people don't just want to laugh. Mm. So you take a bow. You leave to fight another day. You just take a bow and go. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not about that moment. It's about the countless moments that you've been funny. Yeah. Mm. So mm. one bad day doesn't, doesn't cancel you out. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay, so what does a Shiri startup um, do? Okay. You know, when this Instagram fame started and the likes, I realized that one of the things fame will do for you, it brings people to you mm -hmm. en mass. And I get this, send me 5,000, send me 3,000. Baby, baby food. Yeah, baby food. Mm. <laughs> we, 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 we know, know those formats. We know, we know the formats. So I realized that people are really formatting us because they don't have what, what to do. Mm. So I now did something. I had 100k that was just a spare 100k. I wanted to use that money for experiment. Oh, wow, spare 100k. <laughs> then, oh, now I need money. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to use that 100k to do an experiment. Then. So I was giving out 10k. But I gave out that 10K with specific instruction that you need to tell me what you did with that money. So I gave a lady 10K, she bought a gas cooker and she started making home made moi moi and started delivering. Mm -hmm. Then she messaged me weeks after that. She's delivering to, I said, ah, with 10K. I gave a lady 5K. She bought, what is this thing? Ring light. Okay. She bought ring light and she said she got a client. So I now realized that there are some small, small money that will actually count if there's if someone is really guiding them. So that was why. So every, every everybody I gave that money then. So after I exhausted that hundred k, some people saw it, and they started sending money. There was a guy that sent money that he want to join the course too. So at the end of the day, we were able to empower like it is something people with ten wow. k. The highest we gave out was twenty k. Mm. So we now brought all of them to like a hangout. So that was how she started started. So we now help, we help them on how they will grow the business. Grow the scale the business. I gave all of them free advert for like wow. three months. I was posting them on my story. I begged some of my influencer friends to do the same too. That was why actually start up started. Alright, so um, tell us about your immorality. Sorry, your morality. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody call it immorality at first. It's immorality. Humor as a prefix. I know, I know. I was just then morality as the yeah, it's just, um, like I said earlier, the situation surrounding shows doesn't permit the growth of comedians mm -hmm. because you are under pressure to deliver in 34 minutes. But Comedy Club offers a platform mm -hmm. for you to really own your skills mm -hmm. without pressure, without... So that was why we started the Morality, a platform where you can crack jokes, experiment your jokes. You have time to correct yourself. Because comedy club is one of the things that grew comedy mm. in the advanced world. So that was how we started the morality. And to the glory of God, we had like four boarding acts now that their debut on stage was at the morality. Mm. So mm. we've done it for 30 episodes on the mainland. They clamored for it on the island. So we brought it to the island now. So it's not in Lekki too now. So that was just the idea. It was an idea for me to improve as a comedian and in the process improve other people provide quality love for the audience, and also raise other comic models. That was just it. All right, so there's this thing that bothers me about comedy, because I believe that um, the comedy space shouldn't be controlled, because it's just for laughs. It's a yeah. joke. But you find out, I'm glad you brought up um, Dave Chappelle and yeah. Trevor Noah, because I follow them a lot, and okay. I watch a lot of their um, comedy shows as well. But they're, um, the last one Dave Chappelle did, Sticks and Stones, I yeah. don't know if you've seen I've that. I've seen it. Yeah, you know, he was talking about certain things he cannot say, yeah. such as, um, yeah, 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 you know, I, certain I things he can't yeah. say. But I think, if you ask me, it's comedy. You should be allowed to say anything yeah. and everything. 
Sure. I don't think it should be something controlled because everybody knows that you're not being serious about it. Now, what do you feel about this control where some people say, oh, we can't let this person come into church because it cracks this type of joke? Mm -hmm. Knowing fully well that you can actually do a conscious joke if you go to a church program. What mm -hmm. do you think about that? Well, you know, comedians are social commentators mm -hmm. and the language of comedy is mm -hmm. very huge. Any pe everybody understands it. It's universal. Mm -hmm. And... I believe a comedian should be able to talk about ev everything Pitain. so far is passing the right message across. Mm. And not insensitive. And not insensitive message. However, there are some inconclusive controversial issues that if you know you are not a master of it, or you don't have the capacity to balance it if you joke about it, it's always better not to touch it. Some people are masters of it. There's Bovi gets away with almost anything because people know him. They give him that. He has the legitimacy to talk about it. It's not all comedians that have the legitimacy to talk about some issues. It's not the all comedians that have the legitimacy to even jab government. Mm. Mm. So you, it's, it's, it's all about you aggregating your strength, knowing what your place is and what you really want before you start picking on issues. Mm. What A will say and get away with, B might say it. And, then talking about churches, I believe... Church has a language. Mm. So the church, I think, is left for the church to go and review the content of whoever they want to bring. So mm. that, okay, okay, then we can bring this person. But if you didn't review the person and you brought the person, and you're not expecting the person to conform, like I always tell church folks, I won't recommend anyone for you. If they say, okay, recommend, mm -mm. go online, check the way they think, check their thought pattern. You can easily decipher. You can't expect them to come and now try to ship. There are people that are born for it. They can come on stage on the church and be clean. Mm. Call them. There are people that are born for the club. There are people that are master of street shows. Mm. So let's just put a uh, square peg in square hole. How do they put mm. it? So call people that have capacity for what you want. Don't bring people that are outside what you want and in the process you start fighting them. You are the one that played them in an arena that is not their own. Mm. So everyone has the arena. Where their where their expertise lies. So, so would you say the state of the nation affects <coughs> um, the comedy business financially and creatively? Yeah, financially, I think the comedy space. Well, I won't want to generalize, but I think the economic situation has it made it swindled in a way, because gonna for now, like we used to jokingly say before, if we get so many calls so that you can ignore calls. Mm -hmm. But now even if someone called me, it's me that will call back home. Mm -hmm. Someone called me yesterday. I had to quickly call back. I realized it was a service provider trying to market. I cut it back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but before, you know, there was influx of events. You know, there are so many regulations now from the government, which is laudable, though. The TSA, the, so people are now very locked down to spend money. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there are still gigs that people still go for, you understand? So it's just, but... The situation of the country actually helps create in a creative way because you have so many issues to play with. Mm. There are so many dramas going on in the Senate, so many dramas going on online, so many things training. So at least if you are truly creative, you can't... Speaking it. on the state of the nation mm -hmm. right now, there's a buzzing issue going on, which is a sex for great scandal. Mm -hmm. I would like to get your take on that real quick. Well, my take, I, I don't think my take should be far-fetched. It's very wrong for, this is the clause for me, it's very wrong for someone in a position of obvious advantage mm. and an exalted position of authority to use sex as a leverage or to, to use, to, to like take advantage because of that authority. If it were to be a mutual something outside your position, it's your own morality problem. Mm. So, but the fact that you are in a position of authority, it's a no for me. Okay. So sex, you can't exchange sex for grades, and you don't group or lure girls into your coven. No, because of your we all have sisters, we all have, mm -hmm. no, no. It's, it's, I, I watched the interview and it was the point where- Saddening. Suddenly, the, the lady cried at some point. I don't think any lady or anyone should experience that. Mm -hmm. Everyone should have the right to, to education without fear of being harassed. Mm. So. 
All right, one. except you have one very quick question. You already asked my question, All but right. then I wanted, I wanted to ask that. Some people see you as a motivational speaker. Okay. Uh, do you see yourself as a motivational speaker? Oh, wait, can I just add to that question? That okay. Apart from seeing you as a motivational speaker, some people call you a spiritual or um, a religious comedian. How do you feel about that? No, I'm not a religious comedian. <laughs> okay. I perform everywhere. So are you I'm a motivational a, speaker? Everybody is a motivational speaker. That's mm. the problem we are making in this country. If you've had a story, if you've had success at some point, if something had worked for you, you're a motivational speaker. Mm. Because you already earned the legitimacy to teach someone else, mm. to motivate someone else. So I motivational speaker is not a broad of, it's not a field of study. Mm. It's what every achiever should be. So. All that's right, it. thank you so much yeah. for your time. And that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. You can join the conversation as always by using the hashtag Tea Time on social media or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always to go to my co anchors, Ife Oshunkeye and Ewa Ritu, and of course the entire production team, and definitely our guest, Ashiri Comedy. What's, what's thank you for coming <laughs> through. Well, you should pray for us before you leave. Or you should oh, yeah, go. Right. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. Plus TV. Okay. Last one. Well, only antenna here. I don't finish it slow. I don't know Amen. All right. My name is Elsie Godwin. Saying thank you for watching and see you later.